All right, how's everybody doing? Everybody hear me all right? Let's do an audio check. Give me a yes, no, maybe. Sound is good. All right, terrific. Everybody see the chart? Everybody see the uh, information there on the screen? It says wealth and trading, modeling perception to achieve your goals and find success in life and trading. Yeah, I know that's long-winded, but we're going to get to it. Um, first of all, let me just say thank you to all of you guys for showing up. Um, spending your day here, there have been, uh, you know, o over, there have been a ton of people in this thing all day long, and uh, all the other presenters, and uh, how about how about Steve Neeson? How about that? You guys know, uh, you know the living legend, Steve, and uh, it is, uh, Steve was one of the reasons I actually paid 50 bucks so that I could share the joy of some of these uh, some of these presenters with you as well, and Steve was actually one of the guys that I wanted to come and hear because he is a true master of his subject matter. And one of the things that um, he brings to the table is that wealth of knowledge. And I wanted to actually come and, and hear what he had to say. And, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, that, that information that you received in, in that last section is, was, was probably the, the best event um, so far today. So, Steve, I don't know if you're still listening, if you're still in here, um, but well done. Uh, that was an excellent uh, program. Um, the second thing I would say is, you all must be absolute gluttons for punishment <laughs> because you know you guys uh, come in here and you're you know you're listening to all these different presenters and it's a whole day event and everybody's got all this information that they've uh, you know they're sharing with you and you got a bunch of educators in here telling you how much you need education <laughs> it's like going to the new car dealer and uh, you know him telling you you need to trade in that old Volkswagen for a brand new BMW right but uh what you need to understand and, and what I would ask you to remember throughout the course of this is that in, in each one of these little sections, there are nuggets of wealth. And what I told my traders and what I told my clients about this event was, I said, I'm signing up, I'm going to put my own, you know, 50 bucks into this event because I want to, you know, I think that there will be value here. And each of these little nuggets is a tool for your toolbox. It's something that you can add to what you're doing currently, whether you're successful or not. There's no one right or wrong way to trade in the standpoint of whether you're a day trader, swing trader, position trader, whether you trade counter trend divergence or trend following. It doesn't matter. The most important thing is that whatever you're doing, number one, it has a positive expectancy, and number two, that you do it with consistency. And for those of you who are worried, uh, at the end of this thing, I don't have anything to sell you. I got, I'm not gonna, you know, you're not gonna be directed to, to, to some system or some, you know, training course or anything like that 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 uh, I have to offer. So any of you who are who are constantly sitting through each one of these little events, going, okay, how is this? How is he gonna culminate all of this in some sort of, you know, grand sales pitch at the very end of this thing? It's not coming. So you can just kind of relax and and enjoy learning a little bit um, and maybe approaching the market from a little bit different perspective here over the next. Oh, hour to hour and a half. Um, so, what are we going to talk about today? Well, I, I I thought a lot about kind of what I wanted to discuss with you guys. Many of you know me. Many of you do not. Um, but what I wanted to do is I thought we would we would come at this from a couple of different angles. You guys, I've been in the in the rooms all day listening to what the other presenters have put out. There's been a lot of talk about you know a lot of charts, a lot of numbers, you know, a little bit on psychology. Norman Hallett did a great job on that little psychology chunk. Um, and what I wanted to do was kind of combine a little bit of that. I want to talk with you about something that I did um, several months ago with my traders, uh, with my clients. I talked a little about something called wealth and trading. And uh, I want to discuss that with you a little bit, and then I want to take you in and explain to you a little bit about how I trade, the methodology, um, the use of, I use Fibonacci and structure analysis in my trading, and I want to show you guys a little bit about how that works. And that's going to be it for me, but this is going to be, this idea of wealth and trading is kind of a concept that I came up with because we tend to view the market through a prism, and sometimes we view life through a prism. Perception is reality. And it's funny how sometimes you can have one small little piece of information or, or one you know new way of looking at the market or looking at life that causes you your perception to completely change and to alter the way that you look at things from here on out. And what I want to try and do is help you define that um, over the next hour or so. 
For those of you who don't know me, that's me. That's my ugly mug. That's uh, about uh, that's the that's the sharpest picture I had on hand. Um, I'm a former United States Marine. I actually did the majority of my time with a sniper unit, and then with uh, Marine Force Recon. That is the military, the Marine Corps equivalent to the Army Special Forces, the Navy SEALs. I did counter counterinter- counterterrorism, counterinsurgency. I was an explosive expert and a uh, a sniper for them. So uh did some some high speed stuff for them. After I left the Marine Corps, I actually started a consulting company that dealt with that specialized in high risk government contracts. This was in places like Iraq and Afghanistan. And what we did was uh I did a lot of uh, a lot of consulting work for them down down there and so I spent a lot of time in the hot zone um working around some 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 pretty dangerous stuff. I have been trading for 10 years. I haven't been successful for 10 years, but I have been in the market for 10 years. Basically, since the day I turned 21, I have uh, I have had an account open and have been working through the same types of things that you guys are working through. And I learned to trade the same way that you guys are learning to trade. I learned to trade in my basement. I learned to trade while I had a full-time job, while I was doing, you know, uh, in the military and, and in the consulting world. And so for those of you who are looking at your life and saying, man, I've never worked for a big fund. I've never worked for a big house. I don't have no one have a license. I you know I don't have access to any of the stuff. You guys can be just as successful as the as the very best in the world. It is possible to move out of that. But I just wanted to give you a little background there on me um, trading for about ten years. I have been coaching traders for about three years, a little over three years now. Um, and, uh, and so that gives you a little background on how long I've been working with traders. In 2009, one of the, you know, the, the deals that I did, I placed a fourth in the Varengold Trader Challenge. I returned about 274% in three months. Um, I didn't compete this year because I was actually training, uh, during that time. And so I didn't have a chance to get in there and work it, but I will, you know, I'll plan to, uh, to trade, uh, we'll be doing World Cup advisors or something like that here in, in the short term. But let's talk about this idea of wealth and trading. Um, Everybody wants to get rich, right? Can I, if I don't have, uh, if somebody can help me out here, either Kristen or or somebody there, if you can give me some feedback here, some people typing for me, open up the chat, let them scroll so that we can go ahead and and I can get a little bit of feedback because I want to ask some questions and whatnot. But everybody wants to get rich, right? Everybody wants to, you know, make this thing happen. Thank you. Rich. Beyond our wildest imaginations, right? Well, how do we define rich? What is rich? Rich is money, correct? A wealth of it. And we can have riches in different ways. We can have wealth and you can have health, a lot of health, so you can be healthy. But when we talk about wealth, when we talk about financial success and financial freedom, we're talking about money. Most people. And for those of us who are looking for that we want to do that using you know some sort of occupation people want to go out and rob a bank they want to they want to they want to generate their wealth in some sort of honorable or you know acceptable means independence yes excellent another good one okay now most people are looking to get wealthy at their occupation or their job and for those of us who are in the world of trading, we think of this as we want our job to be trading, right? Who's here? Everybody's working a full-time job. Most people here working a full-time job. How many people here are trading full-time? I'm guessing not many. There's probably some in here, but I would guess the majority. There are some. Okay. Who here is not? Who here has got a full-time job? I'm full-time jobbing it. Say yes. Full-time dentist. Perfect. Well, for the majority of people, they're doing one of two things. Either they want to transfer out of their current job. They want to get out of it. I'm tired of being a dentist. I'm tired of being an electrician. I'm tired of being a ditch digger. I want to be trading for a living. And then you've got another group of people who say, I've been a dentist or I've been a mechanic my whole life. I've socked a little bit of money away. I'm doing all right, and I'm going to retire. But I'm not ready to quit yet. And so I'm looking for that second income on the back end. I have a retirement portfolio and I want to take a portion of that and trade with it. But whatever you're talking about, you're talking about a transition either from one job to another job or from retirement and quitting one job and moving into some supplemental income. 
So everybody wants to get wealthy. Wealth is measured in dollars for most people. Everybody wants their job to be trading. Now what is trading? Somebody define it for me. Help me out. What is trading? Trading is buying and selling, right? We come in, we buy, we sell. We want to buy low and sell or <laughs> buy low and sell high. Or the other way around. Making positive pips? Wrong. Lots of people are trading right now and not making positive pips. Changing one thing for another, pretty much buying and selling. Right. So if this this makes sense, right? Tell me if this doesn't make sense. But we come into the market, we're looking at becoming wealthy. We want to make a lot of money. We want our job to be trading. That's how we want to do it. We want to generate wealth by trading. And by defining trading, trading is the buying and selling of a particular investment or trading vehicle, be it stocks, bonds, currencies, futures. You guys tracking with me? This makes sense, right? Everything that I'm talking about. Everybody's like, yeah, that's me. Put your hand in the air if you say that's me. Yes, yes, right. Perfect. And it's funny how we can take something that is completely logical and something that makes so much sense when we look at it through this through this prism and yet can be so far off the mark of what we're really after let's talk for a minute about your job we talked about how you want to transfer what you're currently doing into something that you want to do I want to stop doing something I'm doing now I want to do something new for most of you you've had a full-time job for the vast majority of your life for the majority of you here today, I would venture to guess that that was not as an entrepreneur. Probably have some salespeople in here. But for the vast majority of you, your job for the last 5, 10, 20, 30 years has been time for dollars. This concept of time for dollars is really an anchor point for us as traders. We come into the market looking at it and saying, hey, when I go out to my regular job, I work eight hours a day and I'm paid X amount of money. If I work more than eight hours a day or if I work more than that, what do, what do I get? What does somebody give me if I work more than 40 hours a week? Overtime, right? Because I'm due. Time for dollars. When we get ready as a consultant or as a salesman, something like that, you know you measure how much time am I going to have to put into this guy versus how much compensation am I going to receive for it. And it's this idea of time for dollars. And so when we step into the market, we have this same concept of trading time for dollars. But when we really break this down, and this is what I want to get at when we talk about misconceptions, about missing the mark, about taking something that seems so logical and so well thought out, so reasonable, and how it can be so far off the mark when we really gain a new perception. Because you see, guys, wealth isn't measured in dollars. Wealth is measured in time. Let me explain what I mean. A guy makes a million dollars a year. Shoot, a million dollars an hour. You pick how much. He lives in a $10 million home, leveraged to the hilt. He drives a Ferrari. He's tapped out on that. He's got a $50,000 credit line on his credit card that's maxed to the brim. He's got five Rolex watches. Still making the payments. And when you look at it, that guy might be bringing in a million dollars a month, but how long can he maintain his current lifestyle if his million dollars a month goes away? Not long. Wealth isn't measured in how much money you have in the bank. It's not measured in how much money you make every year or every minute. Wealth is measured in the amount of time from today to when you have to start modifying your lifestyle because your income is gone. For most people in the world, this is a matter of days. How many people have been out of work? 
when people are currently out of work. I bet we've got a few in here. I didn't have anything else to do today, so I decided to come on in here. Perfect. How long after you found out you had lost your job did you get on the phone and say, Hey, honey, we're going to have to start making some changes. We're going to have to tighten that belt up. We're going to have to cancel the cable bill because I just lost my job. Our income's gone. For most Americans, for most people around the world, as soon as they find out, they ought to be getting on the phone because they don't have any wealth. Wealth is measured in time, not dollars. Most people think they want their job to be trading, but in reality what they want is to be a trader. Now many of you guys might think this is semantics, but there is a distinct difference between your job being a trader and your job being trading. We talked about time for dollars. Guys, in the Forex market, in trading, there is no such thing as time for dollars. There is no correlation between the hours you spend in front of the computer, the hours that you spend watching the charts, and the number of dollars that you make in return. Say yes if you understand. No correlation. When you come into the market, your job is a trader. And how is a trader paid? A trader is paid for discipline and good judgment. Those are the only two ways that you make money. I don't care what your system is. I don't care what kind of fancy indicators you got on your chart. I don't care if you spend 18 hours a day sitting in front of your computer with bloodshot eyes and a 16-ounce cup of coffee in your hand. You will not make a penny in this market if you do not execute discipline and good judgment every day. Now, in the last slide, we talked about wealth being measured in dollars, your job being trading, and trading being the buying and selling. The majority of traders, when they come into the market, they say to themselves, I want to make a lot of money. My job is trading. I have time for dollars. I need to spend hours in front of the computer, and I need to be buying and selling a lot. Makes sense, right? We just discussed it. A true professional, when they step into the market, understands that wealth is measured in time. That money is a tool. That you can enslave money. And you can become the master of it. And guys, this has implications far beyond trading. And this is really a core of what I do. My passion is trading. I need it like I need air. If you don't have that passion for this, then I tell you, leave right now and go find that thing that brings you that kind of passion and do it. But in reality, because my trading is life to me, Everything correlates. And you have got to, got to, got to understand the difference between the way you're thinking now and the way you have to think if you want to be successful. We talk about professional trading and everything that we do and, professional, and being a professional trader. And guys, that doesn't mean being a full-time trader. Being a professional trader means treating your trading like a professional does. Treating it like a business. Do you have a trading plan? Who says yes? Who's got one? Clearly written. Yes, 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 yes. Now, of those of you who said yes, who follows it? Oh, this is where we start. Oh, yeah, no. Nope. All right. Mostly part-time. <laughs> this is the problem. This is discipline. It's good judgment. Understanding, having an education 
in the market, knowing what you do and why you do it, and then coming into the market every single day and doing it with passion and doing it with conviction. If you don't have a plan, it's easy to find. If all it took was a good trading system in order for people to be successful, we'd have a 95% success rate instead of a 95% failure rate. It's not about the system. You're going to hear me say that about a million times. I'm going to say it again. It's not about the system. If you are hunting for a system, you are broken. Broken. And what we're going to talk about in a minute is the way I view the market and the way I trade. But I wanted to start out with this because I wanted you to understand how important it was for you to have the right perception when you step into the market and for you to understand that even though we're going to talk about trading and we're going to talk about how I trade and how I came up with the concept, that in the end, if you don't have discipline, if you don't understand that your job is not trading, but as a trader, then you're finished. If you understand and you agree, say yes. So I feel like we're at a revival. You guys feel it? I'm feeling it. We're going to change some lives, guys. All right. Enough of that. Let's get on to... Let's get on to... Uh, Let's get on to something different. We've been running about a half an hour here. I've got about an hour and a half to blow. And then I don't know if we'll have a lot of time for questions at the end of this. But what I am going to do is I'll hop into the room afterwards and I'll stay as long as you guys want to to talk about um, what we're going to talk about right now, which is basically concept of, uh, of uh, you know how a system gets developed and how I define my CTS system. And then uh, you know I'll hang out for as long as you guys want to after that. But I want to make sure that we get through this. But um, let's go ahead and move this out of the way. I'm standing up, dancing around over here. I get excited when I talk. It's because I like to hear myself talk. But let's uh, let's have a conversation here. I'm going to go ahead and roll this up. I don't want to talk to you guys about this concept. Most traders who are here, who in here just just give me an idea. Who in here has more than a year's worth of you know, experience losing money in the market. Just put your put your little yes up there in the air. <laughs> All right, lots of people. All right, so I would imagine that over the course of time that you've developed quite a few different strategies and techniques and you've read more than one book and this isn't the first seminar that you've attended. Would that be fair in saying? Okay, good. And this is the problem for a lot of traders. It was a problem for me. Was that I had a wealth of knowledge and information. We talked about Steve not long ago and his understanding of, of candlestick patterns. And this is a great example. Can you use candlestick patterns to make money? Abso-freaking-lutely. Can you use Fibonacci's to make money? Absolutely. Can you use Bollinger Bands and channel trading and counter trend and divergence and RSI and MACD? Can you use it to make money? Yes, absolutely. Guys, I know traders who watch the stars and deal with astrology in determining when to buy and when to sell. Make millions. You can make money any way you please. But the problem is, is that we get into this mindset and we start bouncing around the market and we're like, okay, I'm going to learn, oh man, I just learned a head and shoulders pattern. Let me go out and trade some of that. And then you're like, oh, there's a double top. Oh, there's a channel break. Oh man, there's a three bar reversal pattern. Oh, there's a you know, bearish engulfing candle. I remember that from Steve's course. I'm going to go ahead and trade that. And what happens is you come into the market, you're bouncing around and you're like, a ship without a rudder. You're like a fire hose without a fireman. You're just hitting anything that's moving. There's no rhyme or reason. There's no methodology. There's no set organized, organized platform for you to work from. 
And I was coming into the market and I had this wealth of knowledge and experience. I've been doing this for years. I've been to all of the programs and all of these different things. And I'm, I'm looking at all of this stuff and I'm thinking, you know, all this stuff has value. But I've got no idea. I've got no plan. I'm just stepping into the market and just like shooting. And so I was listening to a lecture this is going to get a little academic, so you eggheads are going to be in love, and everybody else is going to be like bleeding out of their ear holes, and it's okay. We're going to move through it kind of quick. But I was listening to a lecture by Robert Schiller. He is a professor at Yale University, and he founded one. Of the, he was one of the uh, original founders of both mathematical finance and later behavioral finance. And he was talking about something called expected utility function. A weighted utility function, and I'm not gonna. I, I normally do a big thing on this where I talk with traders in detail about how I came up with this strategy, but I'm not gonna do that right now. Basically, what he what he says in in this uh, in this lecture was human beings cannot properly estimate percentages. Human beings don't understand the difference between a 25% chance and a 30% chance. And if you take a look at this little graph that I've got up here, on the right-hand side, this is the probability that you would be right. So assuming that, you know, right here you have a zero chance of being right, and here you have a 100% chance of being right. And then on the lower bar here, this is the likelihood that you will take action. And they did this with gamblers, and they said, what is the likelihood if a, if a gambler has a 25% chance of winning versus a 40% chance of winning, will he take a specific action? So the likelihood that you'll take action, no chance, and 100%. So if you've got zero probability, the answer would be you, you, if you have no chance of winning, you have zero chance of taking action. This just makes good sense. So, But if you've got a 100% chance of winning, there, then you're absolutely going to take it. It's like, hey, if I wanted to give you $100, would you take it? Absolutely, 100% of the time. 100 out of 100 times, Jason. And so if we think about it, the way our mind should process this is in a line that goes something like this. Whereas the probability that we'll be correct increases, so does the likelihood that we'll take a specific action. But that's not the way human beings weigh probability. You see, our, our monkey brains cannot wrap, their, cannot wrap themselves around the concept of... of uh, of, uh, of percentages. And so what we do is we weight probability according to what's happened in the past, according to our current situation, and so on and so forth. And the human brain likes to think in threes. It really does. In fact, in many, many old languages, there were only three numbers. There were one, two, and many. And that was it. If you had more than two, you had a lot. And so human beings weigh probability like this. I either have no chance of being correct, I have some chance of being correct, or I have a 100% chance of being correct, right? Well, in reality, that's the way we think of it. In trading, we look at it like this. How many times have you heard you got a 50-50 chance of being right? Except for the fact that the broker takes his share and you got to be right on the entry and on the exit. But in reality, we look at trading and we say, well, we have some chance of being right. We've got a chance. If we're lucky, we got a 50-50 shot. But we weigh probabilities in a distorted way. And so when I was looking at this, I said, you know what? I'm sitting here trying to factor in what's the percentage of the time that I'm going to be right this time over that time, and I'm looking at all this. I'm saying this just this just doesn't make any sense. There's there's no point in me trying to do this because this is a waste of my time. I am I'm not an atom splitter, guys. I'm not out there curing cancer. I'm just a trader. And so, I took a look at what I was doing currently, and I said, well, number one, I don't have any kind of plan. But I've got all this foundational knowledge, but I've got no way to apply it rationally in the market. And so what I ended up doing was creating a very simple system. A very simple way of analyzing the market based on a ranking system. And I ran down 
the four or five most important chart setups, pattern formations that I knew worked well, that historically performed well. And I created a ranking system out of it. So for example, I use Fibonacci and ratio analysis in everything that I do. I use everything off a of structure. There's no magical indicator, no magical oscillator, nothing to install, no code, no secret secrets of the market makers, whatever other garbage they're peddling these days. Just looking at price action and determining what's going to happen. Now I've got this pound yen on a four hour chart and I've got it in bar tick replay mode in e-signal which means that we can kind of walk the market forward and we can take a look at how I view the market. And I'm going to take you through a couple of different trades. We should probably start with the Swissy but I'll wait because this will be easier. Um, basically what we've got here is the markets come into a resistance zone. All right. We can see that the market's gone from an oversold condition. I have an RSI here. It's a seven-period RSI. If you guys are writing this stuff down, grab a pen and paper so you will have this for later because I don't want to have to explain it again. But the RSI has gone oversold. I use 80-20 on the RSI, 80 for overbought, 20 for oversold, and I use it on a seven-period. Those of you who understand RSI, if you don't, then ignore everything I just said. The RSI goes oversold here. And then we see a rally, and the market has not quite gone overbought. Now, if you're coming into the market right here, what we're looking for, I am a counter-trend divergence-style trader. And I'm going to explain what that is as we move forward here. But what I want you to pay attention to is the thought process. Because it would be very easy to take a look at this and say, man, there's a double top. Man, I can go ahead and sell it. I know a double top. I can sell a double top. It's very easy to take a look at this and say, um, you know, I'm going to wait for it to break resistance and then I'm going to buy because I see the resistance area there. And then you come into this area of confusion where one day you do one thing and another day you do another thing and there's no consistency in your trading and you're just, you're just flipping lost. So as we watch, walk this thing forward, what we see is the market pulls back, boom, back down again. And then we get a little rally, break above, close above that resistance level. Now, once we hit this, we can start making some projections. We know that the last leg of this move went from this low, right here, to this high. That was where the initial leg of the move, this is what we refer to as an impulse leg. When we take our Fibonacci extension, I deal with Fibonacci extensions and retracements. Just so I am, I understand, I, I'm where we're at, because this is only, a, we're not even going to scratch the surface here, guys, but I want to, uh, who here has no understanding of Fibonacci's whatsoever? You're just like, Fibo what? Go ahead and tell me yes. Say, that's me. And if everybody knows what it is, then we're going to rock this thing. Okay. A couple of people don't know what it is. Okay, well, good. Then we've got 400 and... 50 people in here who know exactly what we're talking about. All right. So we take our Fibonacci extension. I use a set of Fibonacci extension and retracement numbers that I'm going to talk about in just a minute. But we take our Fibonacci extension and we're going to project where this market is likely to terminate. And we can, as you can see here, let me delete this stuff so this is gone. This will, that way we don't get confused. And as you can see here, we have a 127 and we have a 1618. These are the two major Fibonacci levels that I will use. There's a minor Fibonacci level as well that I use. It's a 1414. These are the only three that I ever use. Again, when we talk about Fibonacci trading, a lot of people will say, well, there's a thousand Fibonacci levels. You'll always find the market moving into some Fibonacci level, and you're absolutely right. That's why you have to confine yourself to a specific view. There's a reason I use these three. But mainly, 127 and 1618 are part of the golden mean. 1618 is the golden mean, and 127 is a, uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a square root of. And then you have 1414, which is basically a, a version of the 127. But as we take a look at this, 
we're looking for the market to come somewhere into this area. Now we got a big area here. We have no idea where this market might choose to terminate. But we're going to be watching these Fibonacci levels as the market presses up, and we're going to be looking for a place to go short. Again, counter trend divergence trading. What does that mean? It means we're going to be looking for places where markets are likely to terminate. I buy tops, I, I sell tops, and I buy bottoms. This is what I do. So we watch the market carry forward. We come up into the 1414. Now, one of the things I'm watching as well is a potential for an ABCD pattern. Boom. Copy. Some market harmonics. Now, these market harmonics are coming in a little bit ahead of the 1414, but not quite to the 1618. Market goes oversold. This is the first condition that has to be met that I have in my trading system. Number one, is the market overbought or oversold? If it is, give it a point. So the market is overbought. Where is the market relative to a Fibonacci level? We are at a 1414. We are at one of the three Fibonacci levels that I use. So we're at a 1414. Give it a point. Two points. Where is the market relative to structure? Well, we don't know. Where is the market relative to structure? You'll hear me say it again and again and again. Look left. Structure leaves clues. Let's go ahead and collapse our chart up here. We can't get a lot of data on the four-hour chart, so we need to bump up to a daily. Let's go ahead and bump up to a daily chart so we can take a look at this thing in real time. And when I bump to a daily, I'm going to lose all of my data here, but it's all right. So we're right about here. A 1414. We're looking for it. Let's roll back, and we see... Resistance, resistance, resistance. We break above. What does the market do? It finds support. Then we break through again, and we have a little bit of resistance there. This would be considered a minor resistance level. So now we have markets overbought on the four hour. Let me retrace here. There we go. All right, right back to where we were before. All right, so the market's overbought right there. We're at a 1414, and we're at minor resistance. That's three points. Now, what are we waiting for? Well, I said I'm a counter trend divergence trader. What is divergence? It is a disparity. Market comes back up. You guys recognize this as what? So let me tell me what this is. Boom, right there. Somebody hit me. I know I got clients in here. Double top. Thank you, Tim. Perfect. Double top. Market was overbought. We're at a 1414. We're at market structure. We've double topped. Look down at the bottom of your screen. We have bearish divergence. What divergence means, guys, is that there is a disparity between this high, the initial test, and the second test. Market went overbought. We had a pullback. Market retested, but on less strength. I only use RSI for divergence. Could you use MACD for divergence? Yes, you could. Could you use CC? Could you use any number of indicators to use to get divergence? Yes, you could. I just use RSI. Again, a million ways to be profitable. What do you need? What do you have to do to be successful? You've got to, got to, got to be consistent. So now I have RSI overbought at a 1414, or 1414 extension, at market structure, double top, bearish divergence. I have a combined technical score or a CTS score of 5. The other ones that I would look at is, do I have an ABCD pattern? Do I? No, I don't. The market did not put in a harmonic ABCD pattern here. An ABCD pattern would look something like this. Had the market completed here, we would have been looking at an ABCD pattern. We don't have the ABCD pattern here. Does this mean we can't take the trade? No. It doesn't mean we can't take the trade. 
It just means that we can't give it the additional score because it does it isn't there. So we have a CTS5 on this particular trade. This is a trade that I put out a week before last in my free video update. Every week I do a free video update. I come out, I tell people what I'm thinking about the market. And I throw that out there so that people can kind of see. This was the one that I took a look at. I said, if you guys want to, this is a perfect area. Go ahead and sell them at the uh, sell them at the open, assuming that we don't gap above the high. This is where we were at on Sunday when the free video went out. I said we got double tops. This is a, this is a this is a divergence trade. It's a valid trade. I wouldn't want to see if it gaps above this resistance level, then don't take it. But I mean this. I mean there's nothing wrong with this trade setup. What happens? Boom, market opens down. We talked about, Neil talked about this uh, candle that opened lower. Market comes up, retests one last time, 3548, boom, right there. And then starts to roll over. Now we take a look at targets. Jason, how do you handle targets? It's real simple. I use Fibonacci levels for targets as well. Bring in our Fibonacci retracement level. Swing low to swing high. Be looking at normally we'd be looking at the 382, but what do we have right here at 132.52? Originally we'd looked at that resistance level, right? Pretty significant. So we're going to, go to pay attention to that. We always default to structure. Look left. Structure leaves clues. So as this market rolls over, we're going to look for the Fibonacci level, but we're always going to default to structure. In this case, we see the structure coming in 132.51. That's going to be target one. It has to be. So if we want to take a look at this, stops can go right above the spike high. So you bring in, where's my stop going to go? Well, my stop's going to go probably all oh, somewhere around there. In fact, let's just go 136.02, just so we get right above that 136 even handle. Target one will be 132.52. This is how we gauge whether or not this trade is going to be one we want to take. Here's where the market opened. If you sold them at the open, what's your risk? We're risking this much. What do we stand to gain? To target one, right there. Target one is a at least a two to one, one, two and a half to one risk profile. That means if this trade, if we take this risk reward profile every time, if we require at least a two to one, then we're risking two to we're risking one to make two. Market comes down. We have a rally. Market makes a new structure low and hits target one. Stops roll. We'll roll stops based on structure. We'll look for secondary targets at the 618. Again, look left. Respect that structure. Look at the structure that we've got here. So target two is going to roll down right there. Market rallies. And now here we are. Balance of the trade still open. And you guys look at that and you say, well, man, that thing ran from 131 back to 133. I can't handle those types of swings. You have to. This is trading. If you wanted to, if you wanted to be conservative with it, as the market made a Lower low here, you could have rolled the stops. I wouldn't have, but you could have. Again, many ways to do it right, as long as you're consistent. I always require that the market make a lower low, lower close, in order to be a valid, in order to move my stops. So in this case, the low of this candle, the low of this, let me fatten this up so we can really see it. The low of this candle came in 131.49. The close of this candle was 131.55. Five pips above the lowest low, which means when we draw in our line here, if we draw it in, right there. Did we get a lower low on this candle? Yes, we did. The market pressed through, and we attained a lower low, but we did not attain a lower close. Therefore, this is a double bottom. 
my stops would main would have remained up here. But again, if you want to roll them on a double bottom, you're more than happy to do that. More than willing, to, more than able to do that. Basically, what I'm saying is, guys, this is double top bearish divergence, and so we take this signal, we take this concept of all of these different technical indicators, all of this different knowledge, all of this different, this years of seminars and books and software and ed and chat forums. Good lord, chat forums. Make me a promise. Never, ever, 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 ever go to another chat forum for as long as you live. Say yes. The only people, I will just tell you this right now, nobody making money is spending any time in a chat forum. Nobody. There is not a, I, I don't know of a single successful trader and I know many, who spends any time on chat forums. The only people in those chat forums are losers, whiners, and complainers. You will find nothing of value there. But what we do is we take all this knowledge, all this information, that we've learned over all these years and we start applying a methodology to it. And every time I look at the market, it's the same way. Where is the market overbought or oversold? If it is, then yes, give it a point. Where's market relative to structure? Where are we relative to a Fibonacci level? Do we have higher time frame confirmation? There's a whole list. And then managing the trade. We use an if-then syntax. If the market does this, then we do this. We do it every time. If this happens, then this, then we do this. If the market goes overbought, then we look for structure. If we're at structure, then we look for a Fibonacci level. If we've got a Fibonacci level, then we wait for a double top, we look for bullish divergence. If we have all those conditions are met, then we sell next bar market. It's that simple. Let's take a look at another one. I'm going to show you guys one I just put out to my traders. We're a little ahead of it now. I put it out right before I came in here. But I want to show you the power of this. This is the Swissy. I don't know whether this is going to be a winner or a loser. I don't really care. Over time, we're good. But I'm going to start drawing in some Fibonacci's here, and it's not important that you understand it. This is, this is not a, a, an easy topic. But the market, we bought them right here, 92.23. I just issued this out via Tradecaster to, to my clients and to our insiders. Um, I'm going to start drawing some of this stuff in for you guys. I took a couple of Fibonacci extensions. I want to show you. What do we look for? 127, uh, 1618127s, right? Take the original leg, invert the Fibonacci, we come in at a 127. Let's bring in the most recent leg of the move, inverted Fibonacci. 1618. Let's take the most le recent down leg. This is going to get harder to see here. I'm going to compress the chart up because we got a lot here. Good grief. Okay. We're going to take let's take the most recent down leg here and let's invert this last leg of the move. Fibonacci extension. Swing high to swing low. And back up. Watch the 127 extension. Boom. See how it overlaps? Boom, right there. Let's take the last down leg prior to that. Fibonacci extension. Swing high to swing low. Watch the 127. Watch it come in. Wait for it. Oh, that's so nice. Everything lining up. 127, right around 191.12. We wait for the market to confirm that that's going to be the bottom. Thank you, Andy. Harmonics in action. You guys see the hammer here? That's a beautiful candle pattern. We wait for the market to put in a nice green candle. Then we go ahead and buy them, and we're looking for 133, 193.20s. Now, for those of you who are thinking... This is freaking way beyond me. I'm just, I'm, I'm so lost right now. It's okay. 
you're not supposed to understand how to do this in a half hour lesson. Thank you, Bryce. No worries. It's kind of funny because when people come into my program, um, everybody wants to get right to it. They see this stuff in action and they see it work and they think to themselves, man, I got to learn this stuff. This is freaking incredible. You're calling the bottoms to a few pips. And they want to jump right in and start learning Fibonacci stuff. And what we do is we start out learning how to read a chart. A lot of traders think that they know how to read a chart when they come in to the program. We start at the very beginning. We say this is a new structure high. This is a cycle bottom. And people start pulling their brain, pulling their hair out. They're just like, oh, come on. When are we going to get to the good stuff? I say we got to learn this stuff first. I remember when I joined the Marine Corps, and uh, I showed up. I was really excited. I was going to be in the infantry. I had I was I was signing up to be in the infantry. I was going to shoot guns and blow stuff up, and I was going to you know live the dream, so to speak. For every 19 year old kid, that's exactly what they're looking. That's exactly what I was looking for. Make stuff blow up. So I show up day one. But wouldn't you know it, the very first thing they did was not give me a gun. You know what the first thing they teach you when you show up in the military? Somebody help me out. What's the very first thing? When you get off the bus at boot camp or at basic training, what's the very first thing you learn how to do? Push-ups. Nope. Cleaning? Nope. Nope. Nobody's right. You learn how to stand. Marine Corps, the Marine Corps boot camp is well known. As soon as you get off the bus, they're screaming at you and yelling at you. And the very first thing that you see when you step off this bus are a set of white or a set of yellow footprints on the concrete. There's about two dozen of them. And they're screaming at you, get online, get online. And they put you right on those yellow footprints. A perfect 45 degree angle. And they start screaming at you to stand up straight. Guys, I'm 19 years old. I've been walking upright since I was 18, or since I was a year old. 18 years I've been standing. What's the first thing they teach me? How to stand. Spent two solid months in boot camp learning how to march. Discipline. Ability to follow simple instructions. Ability to complete simple tasks. You say, I do. If, then. If you speak, then I act. If you say jump, I say how high. If you say run, I say how far. If, then. It wasn't until more than two months that we actually went on to the rifle range and I got to shoot my M16. Guys, trading is a skill. It is a skill like being a doctor, like being a dentist, like being an electrician. Whatever it is that you do, let me ask you a question. For those of you who are professionals at your career, what I mean is you've been doing this, this is your life, this is what you've been doing for your occupation. How long did it take you? whether it was doctor, lawyer, plumber, whatever the case it was, before you felt like you really understood what it is that you did, where you felt like, I am an expert. I understand my craft at that level. Four year, 10 to 15 years, I got four years. Hit me with it, guys. 25 years, 19 years, five, three. Then explain something to me. Why is it every new trader that I talk to comes to me and expects, doesn't understand why they're not making millions of dollars a year after buying a $97 trading system or buying somebody's charting software. Guys, when you step onto this field to play ball, you're stepping into an Olympic, a professional field. Imagine if you played football. If you're in America, that's with pads and a helmet. And if you're in Great Britain, it means that you're kicking a, saw, a ball around. But imagine that you stepped onto the football field. 
and you decided, I'm going to go be a football player. But there was no Pee Wee League. There was no Junior League. When you stepped onto the field, you were competing with the very best in the world. You were competing with the professionals. You stepped right into the NFL. Or the World League. What is, what is Darren, what is it? What, what's, the, what's the deal for the uh, soccer? World Cup? Whatever it is. Doesn't matter. Darren's not a soccer player either. We're Americans. We don't play soccer. <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. I'm going to get emails. I know it. It's okay. Um, you're stepping in with professionals. What would happen if that was you? You'd be destroyed. You guys, when you step in to trade, you're trading against the very best in the world. You're trading with people who have access to better information, more timely information, have access to more capital, who've been doing it longer, and who are just flat out better at it than you. Is it any surprise that you cannot step into a professional arena and in a matter of a few weeks or a few months find yourself making consistent profits? This is a game of professionals. And until you start acting like a professional and treating your trading like a business and treating your trading like a professional does, you are never going to see the type of success that you want. You are going to continue to struggle. You are going to continue to bounce from system to system, from one webinar to another webinar. Constantly complaining about guys who made you empty promises. This is what I tell my traders on day one. I say, it's your fault. Whatever happens from this day forward, I want you to say this to yourself every day. It's my fault. It's my fault I haven't been successful. It's my fault I haven't seen the results that I have that I wanted to see. I'm going to take personal responsibility for every decision that I make from here on out. I'm going to own it. It's not going to be my broker's fault because I chose that broker. It's not going to be this last system that I paid $97 for, the third or fourth one that I own. Because I continue to get suckered in by a bunch of crap. Excuse me. No, don't excuse me. I can say that. I'm a grown-up. It's not your boss's fault because he's constantly requiring you to actually do some work while you're at the office. You shouldn't be trying to day trade at work. It's your fault. Once you take ownership of that, once you own the decisions that you make, it's liberating. Not only that, but you can stop making excuses for why you're not being successful and you can actually start looking at the real reasons. And I promise you guys, if you've been doing this for more than a year and you're not at least feeling as though you're starting to get a grasp on what you need to be doing, then there's something broken with you. Not with your system, not with your broker, not with your wife or your kids. I feel so strongly about this that I put together a free video. It's about a half hour long. And it's entitled, Why You Lose. Unlocking the three most powerful things that separate you from the best traders on earth. Kristen, if you want to, you can go ahead and drop that link in now. Um... I told you I was going to give you something for some free stuff when we got done with this. And I'm going to open this up for questions for as long as we need to. And then I will also, um, we can look at another chart if you would like to. And then uh, I'll stay as long as I need to in the other room. But I'm getting ready to next week on Monday bring a group of traders into my live room for two solid weeks. And I'm going to work with you for those two weeks. We're going to do some day trading. We're going to talk about psychology. We're going to talk about money management. We're going to talk about a lot about discipline. And I do this, the last time I did this, we had about 5,000 people who signed up. We held about 2,500 people a day in the room. 
and it was one of the most rewarding things that I have ever done. And so I decided that we're going to continue to do it. But if you go to the link that Christian just put up there, it'll take you to basically a little sign-up page, tells you a little bit about the deal, and then uh, you can sign up for the two-week event, and then you can also get this video, Why You Lose. Now, wait to watch it until we're done here, because there's probably, you want to take some time out, but it's, uh, it is not a sales video. About 95% of what I do is free. I believe in showing people what it is that I do and then allowing you to take advantage if you want to. I got a lot of people who've been with me for years um, who do nothing but just take the free content. And that's fine. Because my job is to teach and educate. And so, thank you, Gina. Gina said she watched it yesterday. But we've been running about an hour now. I know I've been given about an hour and a half. So let me look at one more chart here. Let's bring one more over and show you a little bit about this. Look at the Japanese yen on the 60-minute chart. Now, let's bump this out to a four-hour to begin with. We'll go four-hour, 240 minutes. And this is what I want you to pay attention to because this is where we identify this. This is also a video that went out in my free video. We were looking at this double bottom right here. Boom, boom. Market went oversold. On the initial test, we came back down in. This is Friday's candle right there. Friday's candle. Now, what do we have at the bottom of our screen? Bullish divergence. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? When I talked to the traders, there's the right before the Sunday, I said this is looks like a really good buying opportunity. And we broke this down to an hourly chart. And I'm going to show you why. This was the double bottom. Boom, right here. Now, this is what's so incredible about Fibonacci and ratio analysis. You just had a long downward move. Initial low. Fibonacci retracement. Swing low to swing high. 618 retracement. This is the X to A leg, the impulse leg that we talk about. I have a div I trade divergence and I trade pattern formations. Fibonacci retracement, swing high to swing low. With the second one comes up into a 786 retracement. This is going to make sense in just a minute. So we have X to A, A to B. B to C, C to D, terminating at 127, 1618 extension, swing high to swing low, boom, right there at the 127. Opportunity to buy them up at the 127. We saw it on the weekend. I said, hey, as long as we don't open below, X going to be a good buying opportunity. Had a little extended leg here. Rolling the market forward. Again, how do we define targets? Fibonacci retracement, swing high to swing low. You can either take the 382 or the 618. Either one would have been hit. And then you have the option, if you want to, to do some extended targets. And again, I'm not going to get into all this stuff. I'm here to show you what's possible. There's your 127 right there. So no matter how you slice this up, target 1, 382, target 2, 618, or 127 extension, either one, both targets were hit. This is what's known as a Gartley pattern. This is a 222 Gartley. 618, 786, market presses down. We did, for those of you who are in here who are pattern pattern gurus, well, we got a one pip spike below X. So you say, well, that's not a Gartley. Well, this is the difference between academic trading and people who actually trade. Is that although this did break by one pip here, stops were not triggered, and this was a winner. 
once you train your eye, there's a little something called the reticular activating system. Anybody familiar with this? Reticular activating system is that little piece in the back of your brain that tells you what to pay attention to. For a lot of people, when they look at a chart, they don't see anything. It just looks like back and forth, up and down, green and red. But when you learn the skill of trading, a pattern starts to emerge. And it's a pattern that once you can identify it, is extremely powerful. And guys, we've taken a look at three charts today, three different opportunities, two of them that we put out to as free trades and one that's currently working. We've talked about wealth and trading and how the perception and the way we view trading can have either an extremely positive or an extremely negative effect on the outcome. When you take something as simple as what you're trying to achieve and you start looking at it from the right perspective, it can radically change the direction of your trading. Guys, the two weeks that we're going to be doing is going to be powerful. It is going to be extremely beneficial. But you've, you've got to You've got to make that commitment. You've got to decide that this is what I want to do. That this is what I want to do more than anything else. That this is it. I told you, I love trading like I love air. I need it. I need it like I need my wife and kids. This is all I want to do every single day. And if that's not you then find that thing that you're passionate about. But don't come here because this is where professionals come to make their living. And they make their living off of uncommitted, undisciplined, unknowledgeable traders. The reason that I continue, I can continue to make money in the markets is because there's always some schmuck out there willing to throw his money away. Because he doesn't know what he's doing. He hasn't taken the time to focus on what's really important, which is his own discipline. And he thinks that this is a get-rich-quick scheme, a way for him to make a little extra money on the side. Decide to be successful. Once you do that, I can change the direction of your trading forever. But you got to trust me. That's all I got, guys. That's it. That's the whole shebang. I just threw it all at you. Hit me with some questions. You bet, guys. You bet. Thank you so much for staying and listening. RSI stands for Relative Strength Index. It's nothing more than a measure of um, how strong a market is trending. How do you hit multiple targets at the same time? You can't, Ronald. Uh, you, you basically take off half of your position at target one and leave the balance open for the remainder. The free training, the, the, the majority, the, the training portion of the next two weeks will be recorded, but I won't be recording the training se the trading sessions just simply because I'm, I'm not going to record three hours of me, you know, looking at charts. Uh, Peter says, do you always wait for divergence before taking a trade? No, Peter, it depends on the type of trade that we're doing. If we're doing a divergence trade, then I always wait for the divergence because you, by definition, you have to have it. But if you're trading a pattern formation like a Gartley pattern, then that would be an aggressive buy at a 127 or a 1618 extension.
Thank you, Clement. You're too kind. What was your breaking point in trading? What makes you consistently profitable? You know what? That's a great question because here's what people think, MJ. People think that magically one day you wake up and you have some kind of premonition. And one day you roll out of bed and you're just like, I realize I've God has spoken to me. And I now understand what I have to do to be successful. Or they think, it wasn't until I took this one course, because that's what everybody likes to tell you, all, all the sales guys out there like to tell you, you know, I've taken all the courses and I've done all of this and I've attended all the seminars and none of it worked until I found this thing that I'm going to sell you. Right? <laughs> right? Put your hand in the air. You're laughing. I know you are. All right? But in reality, all of the courses that I took, all of the you know, seminars that I attended, the free webinars, the books that I read, all of that stuff had an impact. It all moved me closer towards my goal. And so there was an MJ, a, a point in time where I woke up and all of a sudden I went from being unprofitable to profitable. I will tell you though, what made the difference for me was when I stopped looking externally. When I stopped looking at all of the stuff out there and blaming it on the system or blaming it on the broker or blaming it on, you know, because I spent time in the chat forums too. They weren't chat forums when I first started out. They were those, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the chat rooms, you know, where everybody came in and just sort of, you know, whined and complained about, you know, or, or touted every single win that they had. Um, and you spend enough time listening to that and you start that starts to affect you and you start to say, yeah, those dirty brokers. Oh man, I didn't realize the reason I was losing money is because I was getting slipped all the time. You know, it wasn't until I threw all of that away and I started looking internally at myself that I realized, you know, my problem is internal. I could have had a million dollar system. I would have blown that thing up. I had, I, I followed no rules. I had no plan, nothing. And even if I would had the plan, I wouldn't have followed it. So that was, if there was a defining moment, it was when I finally made the decision that I was going to stop blaming everybody else for my problems. What question is, what is typical, what, what's typical trading like for you? I mean, what do you do pre and post market? Um, well, I, I've, I, I do so much education now. I am, I, I, we run a, I mean, we run a full-time education uh, in, in not only Forex, but also equities and futures. And um, so I'm, I'm very busy with clientele. I have uh, over, over 500, uh, you know, uh, insider clients and, and we'll be taking on uh, some new pro trader clients here in the, very, very shortly. Um, and so I, uh, you know, I do a lot of education and that takes me away from trading, but I do swing trade. My insiders get my swing trade positions. And uh, so I am watching the market from about 5.30 a.m. Central Time to 10 p.m. And I will take trades, anything. So I don't have a pre and post market. My market is whenever my eyes are open to whenever they close. If you want to learn more about harmonics, guys, a couple of great books is uh, Trade What You See, number one. And another great book is uh, uh, Carney's book. What is Carney's book? What is the name of that book? Harmonic Trading by Scott Carney. Another great book on harmonics. Asking about Ratio Master. We, we'll be putting that together. Um, I've reorganized my life to be able to produce more content um, because that's, I mean, really, uh, my goal is to help as many traders as I possibly can. And the problem early on with, with me is that I, I spend a lot of time in groups with traders. We do, a, we do two live sessions a week. Um, and I was running a live trading room three days a week. And so I was basically not able to produce the amount of content that I wanted to. And so we've changed things up a little bit so I could start producing more things like the Ratio Master Series that you're, that you're referring to. Thank you, Frank. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Uh, if you guys uh, needed to get to 
Kristen, if you'd go ahead and throw that link up again on where they can go to get that other video, that other training video, that'd be great. Any other questions? You guys have been absolutely fantastic. Thanks so much. What broker do you recommend? I don't recommend brokers, Alan. I don't use pivot points, no. All right, guys, my time's about up. I got about nine minutes left. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys being here. Ronald, who says I'm a millionaire, and why do you keep asking me that? Yeah. All right, thanks so much. All right, I guess we're done then. I'll go in. I'll pop into the other room. Um, the, uh, the you know, I guess the after room for the after party or whatever. And if you guys have questions you want to ask me, uh, you know, you, you can you can free to do so. And uh, like I said, if you guys really want to uh, go ahead and sign up, there's the link for the uh, the networking room. Um, and if you guys want to hear more, if you if you like this, like I said, we're going to be two two solid weeks. We we can't even scratch the surface in here today. Um, but I can try and you know try and help you guys with perception a little bit and talk to you guys a little bit about what I do. All right, guys. Well, I guess we're about eight minutes early. So Kristen, uh, Joe, I'm going to turn it back over to you guys. Until next time, guys, good luck and good trading. We'll talk to you soon.